Even before the modern power grid came to dominate the landscape, electrical phenomena were a huge area of scientific exploration. The wonder around electricity seems to have even sparked Mary Shelley's famous sci-fi novel, Frankenstein. You know, the one about a scholar who seeks to bring life into dead flesh with a spark of being? Today, electricity isn't as mysterious. We know that electrical science is the study of moving charges, tiny little electrons far too small to see. And we found ways to generate and harness it for everyday use, lighting our homes, running our appliances, and powering our cell phones and computers. It's hard to imagine life without it. And that's thanks to electrical engineers who design, develop, and test everything from new conductive materials to electronic equipment. Hi, I'm Naya Butler-Craig, and welcome to Fast Guides, a study hall series presented in partnership with Arizona State University and Crash Course. In this episode, we're exploring the ins and outs of majoring and electrical engineering. Engineering is a broad term. As an engineer, you can choose to specialize in a bunch of different disciplines that use science and mathematics to solve real-world problems. In this episode, we're focusing on electrical engineering, which is specifically concerned with studying, designing, and building all things electrical. Electrical engineering work spans from designing small circuit components to helping plan the layout of a citywide power grid. These engineers devise the standards for electrical manufacturers, construction workers, and installers of electrical equipment. They improve products that rely on electrical power, are responsible for testing and safety, and investigate problems within electrical systems. We need electrical engineers for research and development, manufacturing, telecommunications, and government services. They perform vital services that everyone relies on every day. The pay is not too shabby either, with median earners making low six-figure salaries. Because electrical engineers apply key principles of both mathematics and science, it should come as no surprise that those subjects form the foundation of the coursework for the major. For mathematics, you can expect to take rigorous courses in calculus, including multivariable and integral calculus. Depending upon your school, there may even be a special sequence of calculus courses designed for engineering majors. You'll also likely study linear algebra, differential equations, statistics, and advanced mathematical methods that will help you calculate the flow of electricity in all kinds of situations. You'll also develop a foundation in the sciences by taking courses in basic chemistry and calculus-based physics, because you need to understand the ins and outs of subatomic particles called electricity electrons to understand electricity and the very related concept of magnetism. Again, depending on your school, there may even be specialized physics or chemistry course sequences for engineering majors that can focus on applications more than theory. Many electrical engineering programs also require you to learn some programming. All this may be useful when working with integrated circuits, basically working with a bunch of tiny electronic components pieced together on a semiconductor chip. Major specific coursework may start with an introductory engineering sequence, which covers things like a general overview of engineering professions and design processes. More advanced coursework in electrical engineering will cover topics such as electricity and magnetism, analog and digital circuits, or electrical machinery to focus more specifically on the design challenges you'll be solving. Based on your interests, you can also take courses in things like robotics, assembly language, or communication systems and networks to explore the type of work you might want to do in the future. And toward the end of your studies, you'll likely have some large projects to apply what you've been learning. Many engineering majors will also complete internships at some point during or after their studies, which are a great way to gain work experience and make connections with professionals in the field before graduation. It's also important to note that there are a few different options for pursuing a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. The most straightforward option is to pursue the major as a standard four-year degree. But some schools also offer a five-year accelerated engineering program, where graduates leave with both a bachelor's and a master's degree in engineering. Of course, I can't tell you what to decide. The option that's best for you depends on your time and budget, your interests, and your career hopes after graduation. A lot of electrical engineers get their start by being curious about electronics, taking things apart, figuring out how they work, and then putting them back together again, hopefully so they still work or work even better. So if that sort of tinkering sounds fun, you might want to consider taking some electrical engineering classes. Anyone wishing to pursue electrical engineering should also be determined to apply practical mathematics, 
problem solving, and troubleshooting, even and especially when things go wrong. It's safe to say electrical engineering majors need a strong work ethic and aren't afraid of messy situations. They also get a lot of joy from solving real world issues because so many of us depend on electricity in our daily lives. Besides the quantitative stuff, engineers are also creative, versatile, and able to combine knowledge from a wide range of fields in order to solve problems. So communication, attention to detail, collaboration skills, and project management capabilities are also important. Engineering is considered one of the most challenging majors out there because of the intense technical requirements. But many organizations need qualified electrical engineers and are willing to pay for it. So a bunch of opportunities are out there if you stick with this path. But electrical engineering isn't just one rigid path. You may have the option to specialize depending upon what your school has to offer. Electrical engineering specializations include things like communications and signal processing, where you focus on the efficient data transmission and processing, or microelectronics, where you work with integrated circuits and tiny devices. Or you might be interested in electrophysics, which focuses on the design of new technologies and understanding of both large and small scale electrical phenomena. Power systems encompasses all things related to power generation and distribution, while computer engineering involves modifying computer systems and components. For the most part, no one majors in engineering simply because they find it interesting or just want a bachelor's degree. And that's because the technical requirements for the electrical engineering major are intense. Some schools even have weed out courses meant to discourage students with weaker math skills or who might struggle more early on, though no college actually admits this. Many people find the amount of abstract thinking and reasoning required for electrical engineering work to be particularly challenging. After all, electromagnetic forces are things you generally can't see and directly interact with. So if you decide that electrical engineering isn't right for you, you can pivot into a related major. For example, many of the classes may count towards a degree in broader subjects like mathematics, physics, chemistry, material science, or computer science. You could even switch to a different, more specific major within those fields, like operations management or optics. If you do want to stick with electrical engineering, but the workload just becomes too much at some point, it's not a sign you need to drop out of school or aren't bound for success. Engineering takes a lot of hard work and you're gonna be okay. Many people at the top of the field have had setbacks, including failing a course or two along the way, like me. It's not the end of the world. Keep in mind that many schools have ample resources to help students because everyone may struggle from time to time. At ASU, for example, there are success coaches and tutors available. It's also a good idea to make friends with other electrical engineering students and form study groups. And never underestimate the value of visiting your professor's office hours or reaching out to TAs to get questions answered about difficult homework problems or review your lecture notes. They want to help you learn and succeed. After earning a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, your first big decision is whether to enter the workforce right away or pursue a graduate degree. Many entry-level engineering jobs exist for bachelor's degree holders, but those with a master's in electrical engineering may earn as much as 14% more. Some employers who hire you with a bachelor's degree may offer to pay for at least part of your tuition as you earn a master's degree. This can be a great way to advance your career at a minimal cost. Definitely do your research as you are deciding whether to go to graduate school and see if any opportunities like that are available. As you research, you'll probably find that doctorate degrees in electrical engineering are less common. Usually, the only electrical engineering PhDs are people seeking extremely specialized knowledge or who plan to teach at a university. Now, each state has different requirements for engineering licensing, but typically you will need to take some kind of exam after you graduate and before you apply for jobs. If your engineering school was certified by the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, then you should be well prepared to pass such tests. Electrical engineering majors can leverage their skills in collaboration, critical thinking, communication, data analysis, and knowledge of circuits and electricity into a number of rewarding careers. You can find jobs in a variety of industries too, including architecture, power and energy, manufacturing, audio and video equipment, and robotics. Many of these jobs might have the very straightforward title of electrical engineer, but you might cast a broader net and look for related careers. Like electronics engineering focuses on designing and testing electronic components that may be used for commercial, industrial, medical, medical, military, or scientific devices. Electronics engineers use engineering and design software and equipment to do their jobs and often collaborate with other engineers. And in general, talking about salaries is hard because so much can change year to year or depending on what location you're in. But people in this field earn a median salary of around $108,000 per year as of 2020. Computer hardware engineers are responsible for research, design, and development of computer hardware. They often work in research laboratories where they spend their days building and testing their 
their designs. People in this field earn a median of around $120,000 per year. Another option is to apply your electrical engineering skills to broadcast sound or video technology. These technologists are responsible for setting up and troubleshooting audio and visual equipment. The median salary in this field is only $50,000 per year, but this includes people without degrees. Entering this field with a bachelor's in electrical engineering can earn you considerably more, especially because it's expected to grow a whopping 21% from 2020 to 2030. If you want to focus on helping other people more than designing devices, you might consider pursuing a job as a health and safety engineer. Health and safety engineers apply their knowledge to develop procedures, systems, and guidelines that prevent injury and illness. They may work primarily in an office, but may also travel to sites and consult with other engineers and stakeholders and make around $94,000 per year. There are also lots of jobs in the energy sector for electrical engineers. For example, you can work on solar, nuclear, and wind energy systems, improving the efficiency of existing energy capture devices and helping plan the layout of new projects. People in this field earn an annual base salary of around $83,000. We use electricity in our homes, at work, and important public places like hospitals and community centers. It's integrated into the core of our modern society. But not all of us understand the ins and outs of where electrical power comes from, how we harness it, and how we build these devices we use every day. In the end, majoring in electrical engineering can be challenging, but lead to an exciting and fulfilling career answering these kinds of questions, and one that pays well. So tackling those student loans won't be as overwhelming. It's a field that's not only vital, but growing. As we continue to develop more electrical technologies, from computers and electric cars to better solar panels that generate electric power. So it's an excellent choice for anyone who loves taking on challenging problems, particularly those intrigued by the small world of moving charges and electromagnetism. Thanks for watching. If you want to investigate more degrees before you choose, like we all should, check out our other videos to look into more majors to find the one that's right for you. This series is part of the Study Hall program, a partnership between Arizona State University and Crash Course. If you like this video or found it helpful, give it a like and comment and let us know how you chose your degree or how you're struggling to choose a degree or what you wish you'd known before you started your degree.